Hi guys, welcome back to this bonus episode regarding our steampunk tap handle build. In this episode I will show you how to get the LED version of the steampunk tap handle up and running with how to wire an Arduino and how to program it. Okay, so there are numerous ways you can build the Arduino controller for this project. Everything from using a circuit called Atine85 if you only have one or two tap handles to something bigger called an Arduino Mega 2560, if you want to drive hundreds of them. I will try to keep it as simple as possible and use something in the middle. If you already know Arduino, you can skip a lot of what I'm about to tell you. This is mainly for all you people out there that might not yet master Arduino and is only looking for the fastest and simplest ways to get the tap handle LEDs up and running. I will base this project on an Arduino Nano board it is a bit smaller than the most widespread de facto standard UNO model, but it still packs a lot of punch. It is very simple to use, comes ready with a USB interface to program and power it, and it can drive everything from just one tap handle to probably way more than you will ever need. As an added bonus, it is also quite cheap and easy to get your hands on. So get yourself an Arduino Nano board, you can find this online almost everywhere. A typical nano board from eBay will set you back only a few US dollars. Keep in mind though that most cheap nano boards may require you to find and download additional drivers to get the USB communication to work, and that is something I will not cover here. If you want to save some time, then you might want to skip and just spend some extra bucks and buy a solid quality Arduino board directly from an electronics DIY store instead. Before we go into any further details about how to wire these taps, there is one important thing missing. Once you have the nano board in your hand, we need to set it up for programming. Download the Arduino IDE and install it on your computer. Link is in the description below. After you have installed the Arduino IDE, you will have to download one special library in order to easily program the LEDs. A library is a set of functions and code made by other people to make it easier for everyone to code what they want to code, instead of spending time to learn extreme details about every little thing in order to get what they want. There are many libraries that comes already bundled with the Arduino IDE, but not the one we want to use for this specific project. The library you will need is called Adafruit NeoPixel and will help us greatly with the LED portion of our program. A link to that library is also provided in the description below. So now you have installed the Arduino IDE and downloaded the Adafruit NeoPixel library. Great! Now we have to tell our Arduino IDE to use that library. Simply open your Arduino IDE, choose Sketch, Include Library, Add Zip File, choose your zip file you downloaded and select Open. You are all done. Well, almost. Now it's only one small configuration thing you left to do. We also need to tell the Arduino IDE what Arduino product we are using. If you haven't hooked up your Arduino Nano yet to your USB port on your computer, now it's time to do that. Then go to your Arduino menu again, choose Tools, Board, and select Arduino Nano. Also check Tools, Port, and make sure your Nano USB port number shows up there accordingly. These show up as COM ports and not USB ports. 
Select the proper one if you have to, but it should be fairly automatic. I have prepared some Arduino code that you can use if you want. Feel free! Uh, if you do, my Arduino code has four different operating modes. This is the first operating mode, and it's meant to look like some form of candles or furnace or, you know, just take your thoughts back to the revolution of the industry. And the second mode is meant to resemble some kind of lightning laboratory, like lightning rods that flicker in blue and sometimes flash up. The third uh, mode, mode equals three, is very inspired by Star Trek. Warp engines, for example. These are all synced, so they, yeah, they look like this no matter how many you use. The fourth and final mode, mode equals four, that gives you a poisonous effect, like Mad Scientist Lab, for example. Could be good for Halloween or, you know, whatever. Now download my code and load it into the Arduino IDE. Again, link to my code is also provided in the description. Once you have loaded up the code, you will find some key elements in the beginning of the code. There is a row LEDs per tap, where you set the number of LEDs you used for your tap. If you built my tap handle exactly as instructed in the previous videos, you have 5 LEDs, so you can leave this number as is. The next row tells the program how many taps you have in your chain. Set the predefined variable num of taps to the number of taps you use. If you won't be using a mode toggle button for your project, there is one more row of code that you really need to check out. The row says int mode equals zero. Set this mode to the mode number you want the tap handles to light up in. Once your modification to the code is done, it's time to upload it to your Arduino Nano board. Hit that check mark in the Arduino menu to compile and to make sure your code is fine and doesn't contain any errors. Then hit the right pointing arrow next to it to upload it to the board. Once you're done, it should start lighting up your tap handles if you have already connected them. If you haven't, it's time to do so. And here is how. Okay, so starting with our Arduino Nano board, we will hook up our tap handles one by one. First, we need to remember the colors of our wires. If you followed my build to the letter, we have red for plus 5 volts, black for ground, orange for data in, and brown for data out. Wire up the first tap handle by putting the black wire to the Arduino pin labeled ground, or GND. There are two GND on the Nano, and you can use whichever you want, but I usually use the ground closest to the power pin I will use. It's a good practice to always connect ground first. Now connect your red wire to plus 5 volts on the nano board and then connect the orange wire to D3 or digital pin 3. The brown wire does not connect to anything if you're only going to go with just one tap handle. But in our build we will have 5 tap handles. If you have more than one tap handle this is where the brown wire comes in. It will chain connect to each following orange wire that we have until we run out the taps. This is where data in and data out becomes logical names for these pins or signals. Whatever light data we have remaining in one tap handle via data out will be carried over to the next tap handle via data in. The remaining red and black wire of our consecutive taps are just connected to plus 5 volts and ground respectively as before. Continue doing this wiring for all our tap handles. As you might already have realized, the brown wire of the very last tap handle will not connect to anything. You can either just leave it unconnected or remove it altogether. Okay, great, so that is done. Now you can add an optional mode toggle button to your build so you can easily iterate between the four different modes. Connect as in the picture and use a pull down resistor to clean out the low or not pressed signal. I can recommend using a 10 kilo ohm resistor for this. Alright, so we're done. Now we just need to go through some need-to-know current draws very quickly. This is for your own sake, so you don't go breaking something expensive. Each LED in our strip uses a maximum of 60 milliamps, but the average use in our project sees only around 20. However, to be safe when connecting stuff, always assume you will draw maximum current. If your tap handle has 5 LEDs, 
This means it can draw up to 300 milliamps. And if you have five such tap handles, as we do, that means a whopping 1.5 amps. The current output of a regular USB port on a computer can provide around 500 milliamps. Some newer USB ports can supply more than that. But always check that your setup can handle the current draw before you connect anything. The average of our tap handles would draw around 500 milliamps total when in normal operation, and that will take our setups dangerously close to the USB maximum. In addition, the Arduino Nano board itself also has some current draw, but it's a bit harder to calculate. You should aim for around 30 milliamps in our setups. In essence, all this is more than most USBs can handle, so if you need to reconnect the Nano board to your computer for whatever reason, please disconnect some taps first. You really don't want to kill your USB ports. Even though this is unlikely, it can still happen, so it's always better to be safe than sorry. When all your setups are done, I recommend powering your project through an USB power adapter instead, like the ones you can use for charging your phone, for example. Here we have the back side, as you can see here are the taps, and here's a little lid, and under here you can actually spot my Arduino Nano board. There it is. And the uh, little blink light is a little heartbeat uh, light that just uh, can tell me quickly if the board is working or not. That is also included in the code by the way. Okay, that's it. That concludes the project for the tap handles. Now we have everything in place. We built it, we put some lights into it, we programmed it. It's up and running, it's looking great. I hope you do plenty of your own. Please, let me know if you do, send pictures, upload videos, whatever. Um, yeah, keep engineering. until next time. Cheers, guys. <laughs>